we wanted to see that hizmat change the misconception of many people around the world about Islam. That Islam is hating Jews. Islam doesn't like Christians. Islam doesn't like non-Muslims. Here, hizmat basically help us to change that image. My name is Imam Shamsi Ali, and I'm the director of Jamaica Muslim Center. I'm an imam based here in New York City, uh, in the United States. I'm an immigrant. I have been here in the state for 20 years. I'm working very closely with Muslim community uh, worldwide, but also with other communities. I'm very much engaged in the interfaith work with Christians, with Jews, and other people around me. That is my specialization. I'm an imam and well known as an interfaith advocate. I've known Hizmat Mofan for quite a long time. Um, in the beginning, I was, as an imam, I, I was invited to one of the uh, gala dinner for Turkish center in Queens. And from there, I was amazed by the way they organized the dinner, the way they organized uh, the event, uh, the, the people who attended it, from mayor down to the imams. Uh, so I was questioning who these people are. So I learned about it, and I found out that uh, Turkish Center represent uh, a, be a very important, uh, very big movement in, in our world, uh, and that is the Hizmat Movement. So I learned from that moment, and I found out that basically Hizmat Movement represent the heart of the religion, the, the core uh, value of Islam, and that is Rahmat Lil Alamin. Uh, as Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That I did not send you except mercy to all humanity. So the way Hizmat basically serve humanity is, is, is very much uh, important in the way we are dealing with the world today. Now we are living in the globalized world in this 21st century. Uh, our world becomes smaller. Looks like there is no barrier between nations. So we are becoming like one family. And I think in, in front of us, there are only two choices, either work together with all people or fighting one another at the same house. So I think we need to, and we must choose the first one. And Hizmat movement represent, you know, really the heart of Islam to work with all people around, to serve God through humanity, through serving humanity. And that's why Hizmat has built enormous, you know, amounts of schools around the, around the globe in over uh, 100 and 90 or uh, 60 countries and, and Hizmat uh, gave a lot of humanitarian works in different places. Uh, so I think through education and through uh, social works, uh, we can prove that Islam is about serving God through service to humanity and that's what Hizmat is all about. I think in my opinion, the most important contribution of Hizmat is, uh, number one is education. And I mean education here is not only that Hizmat builds schools, many schools around the world, but more importantly, educating Muslims and non-Muslims alike about how to live in a coexistence uh, peacefully. And I think that is a, a great example of, uh, of a human being. Uh, and that's what Islam is. Because it, when you say Muslims, it means good, good person. So I think through education, Hizmat wanted to create best people. And that is what the language of the Holy Quran, Kuntum khaira ummatin, khaira umma. That is the best nation, the best people. And so through education, we educate the Muslims that living with non-Muslims doesn't necessarily mean to create animosity, tension, or conflict. Living with non-Muslims means uh, to live your values as a good neighbors, to show them what the value of Islam is all about. Uh, but more importantly is to provide security because the Prophet Muhammad said that uh, Muslim is the one who gives security to others. Man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is the one whose, whose neighbors are safe from his tongue and his deed. 
And I think this is the education that Hizmat is offering to the people. It's about coexistence. It's about building partnership, friendship, uh, through love and compassion. So that is the best, uh, the most important contribution that our world needs today because we have to acknowledge we are living in the, in the world that are full of conflict, you know, full of conflict, war, uh, violence. And I think, uh, unfortunately, man, many of those conflicts are being perpetrated in the name of the religion. You know, people are killing one another in the name of religion. And here, Hizmat had come to show to the world that Islam is not is there. Islam is not coming to make the people are, are scared. Islam is not coming to harm people. It's not, it's, it's not the religion that brings violence and terrorism to the people. Islam is the opposite of all this. Unfortunately, Islam has been accused of that is Islam is terrorism, Islam is violent teaching. So I think the, 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 the most important contribution, again, that he has offered for humanity is education, educating both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Many terrorist groups, unfortunately in the name of Islam, are being perpetrated by those who are not educated. You know, ignorant people coming from village very easily, you know, given certain money, and they did what they want to do. Why? Because there is no education. So basically what Hizmat is doing is very crucial in, the, in this time of conflict. And that is preparing our young for, to utilize their potentials. And from what I have seen, the schools that Hizmat is building around the world is not only school, it's, it's a very qualified school, the quality. And so the graduates from the Hizmat schools uh, go into different areas. They are very educated, very smart people, very potential people. Because I know there are some schools in Indonesia as well, and I know some Indonesians you know, are taking graduate program outside of the country. And it's not easy for Indonesians to go sometimes to get out from the country uh, because of the language and et cetera and so on and so forth. So Hizmat had offered you know, the excellence uh, schools around the world in 160, I think not many, and, and I don't know any organization that have done such, that building 100, uh, in 160 countries, uh, schools of excellence, not only school, but school of excellence, that can, in terms of academics, among the best, uh, in terms of morality, grounded on the moral you know, grounds, uh, they teach them how to be, be, be good human beings. It's not many organizations have done that, and I, so far, as, as far as I know, there is none except Hizmat have done in 160 countries build such school of excellence. I'm truly appreciative, I'm truly thankful to uh, the Hizmat in terms of interfaith because that is my passion. You know, I am in, I am in there. You know, but I have been in the interfaith for the last uh, uh, 12 years, uh, particularly after September 11. I'm building bridges of cooperation, not only understanding, but cooperation with Christians, with Jews, with Hindus, with Buddhists. And, and so when I'm invited to an event by uh, Peace Island Institute or other uh, organization within the Hizmat movement to engage in the interfaith uh, activities, I feel that that is, that is my real, that is my spirit. And so I'm, I'm thankful to what I've, they have done and they are still doing it. Um, you know, interfaith is a, core, is a core teaching of Islam, it's a part of Islamic teaching. Uh, the verse is very clear in the Holy Quran when, when Allah says, we created you from a single male and a female, and we made you into nations and tribes so that you get to know one another. What is the meaning of getting to know one another? That is the other word of inter, inter it is the other word of dialogue. Because to know one another means to build, to build a communication. So dialogue is to build a communication of one another. Through dialogue, we can build an understanding. We understand, oh, our Jewish friends are those people. As, as many Muslims misunderstand that Jewish people are bad people. Yeah, there are some, but not all of them. You know, similarly, Jews misunderstand Muslims that there are some bad Muslims. Yes, of course, there are, but not all of them. And so I think the, the only way to, to build that understanding is through dialogue and communication. After building uh, an understanding, we can build compassion and mercy. We can build that love. We love one another. We respect one another. But more importantly, we can build partnership and, and togetherness, as I mentioned earlier. And beyond that, we can fight for others. You know, my motto as a Muslim right now working with the Jewish community and Christians as well, is to fight for others. I want the Jewish people to fight for Muslims. So whenever there is Islamophobia, I wanted to see the Jews standing up against it, against Islamophobia. And anywhere that anti-Semitism happens, that is me 
as a Muslim. It's my responsibility to fight against that anti-Semitism. That is what we call fighting for others. And I think we have proved that. Uh, here in the United States of America, particularly in New York, we have seen many Jewish rabbis stood up against Islamophobia. And we have seen many Muslims also standing up for the right of the Jewish people. And I think that is what we need to do in order to build a better world. So interfaith is very essential. It is a part of the religion. So those who say that interfaith is not Islamic, they need to learn more about the religion. Prophet Muhammad moved to Medina and he engaged all people of religion. When he created the, this, the, the Medina constitution, it's called Medina Charter, he invited Jews, he invited Christians, he invited even the pagans, the mushrikun, to come on the table to talk about the constitution of the city. And that is a civic constitution. This constitution is the first ever civic constitution created by humans in the history of, humans, of humanity. And the prophet engaged Jews, Christians, and even pagans. So interfaith had been there. It was not named interfaith, yet the prophet Muhammad had practiced the interfaith work, working with Jews, working with Christians. So those who are suspicious, I think they need to learn Islam more and they need to understand that we are living in a different world. You know, the charity organization that Hizmat is doing, again, is representing the, uh, the mercy and the kindness of Islam. Why? Because the concept of kindness in Islam and the mercy itself is, is not limited to the Muslims. So the Quran says, Rahmatan lil alamin is not Rahmatan lil muslimin. And I think Hizmat is, is serving not only Muslims but non Muslims throughout of the world. And, and that itself is the best way of presenting what Islam is, the nature of Islam itself. And I'm, I'm very thankful. And, and, and when God says in the Quran, Wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk, be kind as Allah has been kind to you, Prophet Muhammad is commanded to be kind as Allah has been kind to him. What does it mean? Allah had been kind to Muhammad without any limits. And Allah is kind to Muhammad, but Allah also is still kind to Abu Lahab. Means what? That Allah wants Muhammad to be kind to all human beings. And so Hizmat basically represents that message. That as the Hizmat is serving the Muslims, Hizmat also must serve non-Muslims. And through that services, Hizmat proof to the world that Islam is not limited to certain people. Islam is for all humanity. And I think that is the best way to present Islam in time that Islam is being misunderstood. I'm following the, um, the, uh, the situations that Hizmat is, is being accused of. Unfortunately, I call that irrational accusations. You know, first, let me say this first. Hizmat is a dangerous organization. And, and what kind of dangerous danger that we are talking about? Building schools? serving through humanitarian works? You know, I don't simply, uh, simply understand. Now, Hizmat is building connection with all kinds of people, with Americans, with Christians, with Jews. Now, that's what Islam is all about. And we wanted to see that Hizmat change the misconception of many people around the world about Islam that Islam is hating Jews, Islam doesn't like Christians, Islam doesn't like non-Muslims. Here, Hizmat basically helped us to change that image and to accuse Hizmat now as being, as, let's say, a terrorist organization is simply, for me, as I said, is a rational accusation. And I think any human beings with sense cannot accept that. You know, through the services, through education, through interfaith dialogue, through seminars, educating people, you know, I never see and I never heard anything that is endangering anybody. Everything is about giving benefits to everybody. And that's what Hizma is all about. My knowledge of Islam through the Gulen movement has uh, greatly increased, particularly um, understanding uh, its desire for dialogue and its desire to interact with, with all people. That it's a very embracing, uh, very hospitable uh, religious tradition. My sense of Fethullah Gulen is that he is modeling what he understands to be a true Muslim.